Hello, and thanks for taking time today to learn more about MindTap for Microsoft Office 2019. In this um, video, we are going to walk through how to begin with your MindTap course, find all of your teacher resources, navigate the course, um, be able to edit, customize, and add any of the resources that are within your course, um, as well as to find a little bit of information about student reports. If you have any additional questions after this training, you can always ac access the full MindTap with Sam user guide or a whole series of training videos from our digital support site. What you're seeing on the screen right now is an NGL Sync dashboard for a computing teacher. NGL Sync is the new portal through which you will access any and all of your MindTap courses from National Geographic Learning Cengage, as well as your instructor resources. To navigate here, you would go to nglsync.cengage.com and log in with your school username and password. If you have any trouble getting into your NGL Sync account or accessing your course, please contact your National Geographic Learning part of Cengage sales consultant and they'll get you set up. So in this particular dashboard, I have courses for all three of our Microsoft Office series. I am going to use the Shelley Cashman series as an example, um, but whether you're using Shelley Cashman, Illustrated, or New Perspectives, the learning paths um, and the solution are very similar. So inside my course here, I have, first of all, I can click more details to make sure that my course dates are accurate for how long I want to have this course. I can also find my course key as well as my registration URL from this screen. Once I'm ready to get my students up and into the course, I can click copy to copy this registration URL. And then I can actually copy this and send that out to my students. Um, once my students are on their computers and they click that link, it'll take them straight into an NGL Sync portal where they can either log in or create an account. And once they do that, they will appear as students within my course. Right now you can see there are no students enrolled in this course, um, but in my second course here, I have one student and I can see their name as well as their NGL Sync username. You'll also notice below the Launch Course button, which we will use to get into MindTap, you'll see a Resources as well as a Student Companion links. If I click the Resources link, it'll open a brand new tab. And within this tab, I'll have my full Instructor Companion site. Now, the first time you come in here, notice that um, how to find your Instructor Resources. There is this nice resource at the top which will let you know all of the different resources you'll be able to find within here. Um, and once I click on that, I'll just have to accept the user agreement and then it will download for me. Um, so while I'm downloading that, you can see that there is also an instructor resources overview, a full instructor manual, which will give you um, good information for every single module of your course, as well as additional classroom activities, discussions, um, quick quizzes, and things like that. You've got PowerPoint presentation lectures, all of your solution files and start files for your projects, um, and test banks that are uh, formatted for the different learning management systems, as well as your Word test banks. Um, and anything that's unlocked here, uh, you will find within the student companion as well. And your students, once they log in, will have access to these. So how to find your student resources and their data files, as well as a master glossary. Jumping back to the course, um, I'll now click Launch Course to get in here. And I'm going to go into the one that does have a student in it. Again, it will open a new tab to bring me to my MindTap course. Now, I've been in this course before, but the very first time you're in here, you'll have a series of windows pop up that will be a quick wizard if you do want to change anything around in your course, edit settings. It's a nice wizard that can walk you through it or you can ignore. Um, sometimes we do have uh, 
quarterly SAM releases where either fixes to content that's been reported as incorrect will be uh, replaced. Sometimes there are improvements to the trainings, exams, projects, and MOS uh, exams. But you can always get information about that here. It's just letting us know from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. on December 20th there will be an update. And at that time, SAM will be down. Otherwise, SAM is up with a 99.9% .9 uptime. Now, within this MindTap course, if you've not seen it before, I have several sections. You can see a lot of colorful apps on this right-hand app doc. On this column here, I can see quickly my class average as well as recent activity scores, and I can dig into those. And on the left-hand side, this is exactly what my students see. It's my learning path, which is organized by my textbook. Now, you may either have the Shelley Cashman introductory textbook, the combo book. Um, you might have a comprehensive level individual applications textbooks or the intermediate book. Now, the great thing about MindTap for Office 2019 is that all of the series content is in here. So whether you have just purchased the intro content, which is about the first four chapters of each application, or if you've purchased you know, a comprehensive PowerPoint textbook, you have access to the intro through comprehensive content for all of the applications for that series within your course. And you can see there are hundreds of activities within here. Now at the very top of your learning path um, is just a Cengage Learning quick link. And this will take you um, to the Cengage site where you can quickly navigate to digital resources. But at the top, this welcome to your course folder, um, you may either want to assign this or not, but it gives students access to some of the content you would find in the front matter of your textbook. Getting started with file management, using Microsoft Office 365 apps like OneNote and OneDrive and Microsoft Teams. You will have student projects within here and there are data files. None of these applications do have auto-graded SAM projects though. Um, you'll find helpful uh, modules and they'll be able to work through projects, but it's not as robust as the main applications. Now, um, we'll walk through the rest of the course, but while I'm here, I mentioned that you can customize your learning path, add, edit, things that you would like. Looking at these buttons over here, there is an edit toggle that is turned off automatically so that a teacher cannot edit anything. If you do want to change something, you can turn that edit toggle on. And now as I open folders and look at assignments, I have the option to edit, hide, or even remove um, portions of the course. I'm going to remove that Cengage learning link because I don't find it helpful for me in particular. But then within this folder, I might say, you know, this is helpful information, but I don't think I'm going to get to it with my course. I can actually click hide and hide all of these things from my course. Once I've hidden something, my students will not see it at all. It won't even be there. As a teacher, if you want to view the things that you've hidden to bring them back, um, you can turn the show hidden toggle back on. And now I'll be able to see those things. They are grayed out, but I could always click show to bring them right back to my course. And now my students will be able to access and view those assignments. Um, you might have noticed the edit button here. If I want to edit something, I can click edit and I can change the title of that unit or activity. I can add a description for my students to read through before they begin. And I can change that location. So um, in whatever order you teach your applications, you don't have to keep them in this order. You can certainly move them around using these drop downs and click save. I'm going to cancel and pop out of that folder. Now, as I mentioned in this course, you do have access to all of the applications and the full content for the course. Um, you'll find at the top technology for success, computer concepts. This is a full course full of digital literacy skills. So whether you um, have time to incorporate this into your Microsoft Office course or not, you students do have access to all of this content. And it comes with a pre-assessment as well as a post-assessment for these digital literacy skills, which can be really helpful to track student growth. But you'll see within here there are 11 modules. Students learn basic computer concepts, so um, that would be file management, um, how to be safe online, doing online research. They get the impact of digital technology. They'll get a, a technology timeline to see the history of technology. They'll learn about technology careers here as well. And you'll notice that there will be videos that students can watch. Um, and the trainings that are here for the computer concepts or digital literacy are highly video based. 
Uh, for 2019, we have recreated all new videos. They have uh, critical thinking or concept check questions at the end of each of those. And then students would read, and they also have these new critical thinking challenges. Uh, critical thinking challenges are branching scenarios that are testing students on content that they would learn within that module. So in this one, uh, just as in any SAM training, over here, this little hamburger, I'll be able to see the tasks I'm working through. There's one in here. It's the use technology in daily life. I have some brief task instructions I can remove. And it's going to allow me to read through a scenario. Last night, you added coffee and water to the coffee maker. You're using Alexa Echo Dot um, and have added a smart plug to it to connect it to Alexa. What are you going to decide? Are you going to make it the old-fashioned way, or do you trust Alexa to do it? So depending on what students select, it actually branches them to a new part of that scenario. And they will be answering questions at the end of this. They should, they'll should they see the outcome of that uh, scenario. From whatever I decided, I will not get to class on time, unfortunately. Um, my plan didn't work out so well, and so I can see that feedback, and I could go through this and try again and, and try to fix my day um, using technology. So you'll find those in there. They are auto-graded as well. Um, and then, of course, there is a review, which would be a practice quiz, as well as your computer concepts exam, which are auto-graded multiple choice questions. Uh, so you'll find that for every single one of these modules. And if you want students to get a basic practice in web development, HTML programming, that is now in module nine, as well as introduction to networking skills and digital communication, as well as digital media. They also get introductory programming skills in the program and app use development module. So this has actually been loaded with a lot more programming, um, data analytics, and web development content than has been here in the past. Now, closing out of that, you also have operating systems for Windows 10. If you want students to use those modules, there will be SAM exams and trainings. There are no projects for Windows. Moving now to Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Access. Um, you'll also notice in Shelley Cashman series, there is Outlook and Publisher. Um, these would prepare students fully. It could be a complete course. Publisher and Outlook also do not have auto-graded projects. They have exams and trainings. So going into one of these key, the core applications in Microsoft Word, you'll find here Word modules 1 through 11. So that's through your comprehensive content. And in every um, across several chapters, you'll see that there are capstone projects that are going to incorporate skills from multiple modules. But before that, at the chapter level, um, this is what you'll find for every single chapter. First, you'll find a textbook project. The textbook project is meant for the, the project that is in your module reading within your textbook. So this is auto-graded reading. Um, within this project, students will have a start file that they'll be able to upload straight from here. Oops. And actually, I'm in step two because I've been in here before. Um, I'm going to go back to step one. So here you can see that I have to use the reading, that module one chapter content for my instructions for this. I can download my start file and supporting files. There's an image that I'm going to use in this Microsoft Word document. So this is completely blank. Um, in the textbook files, students are working with blank files. Um, They're using step-by-step -step through their reading. Um, and whether you have a print text that you want students to read, or if they're just using MindTap for that, they can certainly do that here. Um, this would open up the reading in a separate window, or they could navigate to it through the learning path. So the idea is students would be working in this uh, file as they're reading, or maybe even as you are modeling it in class, they would complete all their steps. They would save that file, move on to step two of two, it will remind you what the file name should look like, and it will ask the students to have underscore their name um, in the file type. Once I can upload that file from my computer, I submit, and that will be automatically graded. After the textbook project, um, you will find that module reading right within here. And as I open up the reading from the learning path, if you've never used MindTap before, this is a lot um, more than just a flat ebook. I start out with a hyperlink table of contents that I can get to very quickly. All of the same content from your print book will be here as well as the same images and screenshots. 
um, where there are Q&As, students can kind of interact with those within the reading. And of course, all of your projects, you're in the labs um, that are at the end of this chapter, will be in the apply, extend, expand, and in your lab sections of the reading. Now, while students are in here, they can highlight some text and then it allows them to actually highlight in uh, four different colors. They can add notes for them to go back to. But as the teacher, you have the ability to also um, add highlights and notes and you can share those with the rest of your class. So you would do that by selecting a note, clicking share, clicking save, and that note will now turn orange. It'll be here in the margin and as your students come through and read this, um, they will all have access to your notes. Same thing if you find something really important you want students to pay attention to, if you highlight in orange, that is a shared highlight and students will see it as they work through the reading. Now within this ebook, they also have the ability to have um, text read out loud to them. I can highlight text and click read text, or I could have the entire page read aloud to me by clicking the read speaker, the little talking man up here at the top. In the app doc, there are settings for this read speaker, whether students would like it to move um, more slowly or more quickly, as well as how they want the voice to sound. Students can increase the size of the text, they can bookmark pages, and they can print a few pages. At Moving out of the reading, after students would complete their textbook project and their reading for the module, you now have access to the SAM training. The training is going to have um, a task for every single skill that students are learning. And these tasks are fully aligned to the Microsoft Office Specialist certifications. So I'm going to just pop right back into my chapter, click the SAM training. Um, trainings and exams will open in brand new windows. So if for some reason you do not see them appearing, you might just have to turn off the pop-up blocker for whatever browser you're using the first time. And within trainings, there are three modes and I can move through them by clicking here. We have first have observe, which is going to give me a video Start work of that to task. Start new documents or edit and print existing documents. And within the video, I do have play tools here where I can pause, I can play, I can speed this up. Um, there is a full transcript for all of the videos right here, as well as I could mute this if I want to. Um, there will be, you know, little notations here that will uh, I wouldn't necessarily need to listen to it. Um, but over here on the top right, you'll also see guide. And this uh, replaces what was previously called the intro mode, which is just giving a description of what this task is and why you would need it. It then gives you step-by-step -step how you would complete that task with all available methods. So whether you're using your mouse, um, the multiple ways you can use your keyboard, or if you're on a Mac computer, if there's any different method to do it there, it would be listed here. I can always click out of the guide. Um, and so now I can move to practice. The practice mode is going to play the video. Start work to create new documents or edit and print existing documents. But it's going to direct me where to go. On the Windows taskbar, click the start button. And it will not continue until I interact with it. So if I try to click the recycling bin, that's not going to help me do anything. But it will move on once I start. The start menu opens. Completing the skill. On the start menu, click work. Now apply mode is all that students have to complete to be able to pass this skill. Um, just as we showed you in those uh, computer concepts modules, if I click the little hamburger here, I'll see a listing of all of the tasks that I'm working through in this training. I can move around and as I complete them correctly, I'll get a green check mark. If I skip them or miss them, I will get a red X. And if I haven't interacted with them yet, they'll remain blank. So here I'm going to complete the task. It tells me that it's complete. It will automatically move me to the following task. Um, now, while I'm in here, students do not want to ever click the red X to get out of here. It may or may not save. They want to make sure that when they're done, uh, they can click submit to submit that assignment. And if I wanted to come back in the next day and continue this, even though I've submitted it, it'll give me a grade 
Um, but as I come in here, you'll see it's it's left me at the same spot that I was. So I still can continue as long as the avail availability date for this assignment is pushed out and I haven't missed the time that this um, is open for me, then I can come back in. Now, speaking of availability dates, um, all of these assignments are open for students. They're just here for students to get into and dig into. If you want to give them availability and due dates so that they can only access particular modules or assignments during a specific period of time, you would have to turn your edit toggle on. And then you can select individual um, activities or a whole module, even a whole folder. So I'm gonna select this entire Word 1 module by clicking that checkbox here to the left. Once I've selected multiple items, this orange batch editing uh, row will appear. Um, and it'll give me my batch actions. So whether I want to hide all of these, edit the settings for all of them, or edit dates, I can do that all at once. Um, and so I can say, I want to make all of these available um, next Monday and they're all going to be due next Friday by 11 p.m. You can change this down to the um, hour and minute of what time you want things to be available and due. And this will actually affect these due dates for all of your students. So this is um, setting these assignments uh, to those dates for your entire course. And what I'm viewing here is very similar to what the student sees. They just don't see things like these edit toggles and the pencil tools here. Um, but students also can view this little calendar view and the calendar view will show them week by week what's due and they can access assignments that way. So now that I have some assignments that have an availability date, they all appear on the day that they're due um, and students would be able to access and view their assignments that way as well. I'm going to go back to our outline view here. So we went into a training. Um, after training, students will have their projects for that module. And so besides the textbook project, they will also have two end of module projects. So in Shelley Cashman series, those projects that are at the end of the module are called in the labs. This will be two of those in the lab projects are in here for students to complete. You'll also always have a project A and a project B. Project A is always a business case scenario, so a workplace scenario that applies to the tasks that they've learned in that module. Project B is either an academic or personal case scenario. So whether you open any of those projects, um, it'll work very similarly to what we showed for the textbook project. I'll click Start, and it will allow me, I'm on step two again because I was here before, but on step one, I will be able to download my instruction file um, because it's not a textbook project, I don't have to go to the ebook. I have a project start file. Um, my start file that I'll be working on, and you can see unlike a textbook project where you're working with a blank Word document, this will already have um, some text, some images that I'll be formatting. And then support files. Um, so again, it looks like we're going to be adding some type of picture to this document. So what I would do here is I can either print out my instruction file or keep it on my screen. They'll give me step-by-step -step instructions. Um, quick getting started will remind me of everything I have to have. It will all be here for me. My project steps, step-by-step, -step, what I have to do. And then at the end, I'll have a full image of what this should look like by the end uh, of the project. I cannot copy this. I cannot paste this and use it. It's just a nice reminder to have that final figure. So I would be working on all of that here within um, this file. And you can see that my name and my username right now is CTE Computing. Um, that is within the file name. It's also within the footer. That's because this file is created specifically for me. It is coded to me. So if I would try to have a friend send me their file, copy their file and paste it into mine, Sam would detect that. If I try to take their file, rename it as my own and submit it, that would also be detected. And I'll show you how to find those cheat detection reports. But I would um, complete this file, work on it, and then I would actually save it. And I'm going to save as. And the only thing that students have to do is they actually have to change this one at the end of the file name to a two once I want to submit it. I click continue. It will remind me what that file name should look like. You can see it's changed to a two. I'll find that file wherever I saved it. I'll submit. 
and then you'll get some nice green check marks here to see that uh, it's submitted appropriately. And boom, at that time, this is fully graded and I can view the reports as a teacher or the student. So because I didn't do anything on this project, you can see I got everything wrong, but I'll get a nice report that shows me everything I was supposed to do, um, what it should have been, what my point value was. Students can get partial credit. They can also get step one wrong and get step two correct. And then I'll actually see my completed project file. This is my file. And um, the grading engine will have notes in here that will show you on your file where you made mistakes. So this gives students um, really even more information than they need to be able to go back in, fix their file, and submit it again for a better grade. Now, the standard setting for all projects is that students have three submission attempts. Um, you can change that if you like. If I wanted to edit any of these, I can click Edit. Again, I can add a description. I can change my availability and due dates. I can move where it is. But if I click Edit Activity Options, this will bring up the SAM settings for this project. Um, and you can see that right now there is not a time limit. Um, it's not listed as practice, it is graded, but there are three submission attempts. I could change this from one to five as I'd like and click save to do so. So after all of those projects, you will then find the SAM exam. The exam it matches all of the tasks that were on the training. It is the apply mode of the training. So now students do not get that guide to show them how to complete the task. They don't get to watch a video. They don't get practice, but they should be able to complete all of these tasks. Now, these simulations are fully explorable. So if I need to create a new blank document, it will allow me to view all of the toolbars. But as long as I click something that is not the correct thing to do, it'll tell me that's incorrect. I can retry this task. And again, students get three attempts at each task. As a standard setting, you can adjust that if you'd like. Um, but now I'm going to complete that blank document and I get that correct. It moves me on. I get my nice green check mark in my task list. And because there are multiple ways that students can do these things, whether they're using their mouse, the keyboard, or if they're on a Mac, um, this will grade appropriately for any available method. I'm going to click out of this exam right now. And that's what you'll find in every single chapter as we move through here. Again, you have your capstone projects. Um, but what you will find come January uh, 2020, once we get into the new year, um, you already have projects for all of these course levels, but at the end of each of these applications, at the end of Word, you will see a Microsoft Office Specialist folder. And so if your school is aligning to Microsoft Office Specialist, uh, then you honestly might just want to use that folder. And we have these live now for 2016, so I'm going to go into a 2016 course to show you what this will look like. But in the 2016 course, when I go into the Word folder, at the very bottom, you'll find these Microsoft Office Specialist Certification resources for both the core and expert levels. This will fill in again, like I said, um, in the new year. Uh, under the Microsoft Office 2019 courses. But within these, you will find trainings and exams that are curated solely to the tasks that are on that certification exam. So if you want to streamline your course, get students through those MOS certifications quickly, um, you can have them read the prepare for the Microsoft Office specialist text. You can have them work slowly through those trainings and exams. Um, and then you'll also be able to see the MOS exam simulations will appear here as well. So besides having trainings and exams that are um, correlated to MOS tasks, we also have a full simulation of that exam. So these are written to work very similarly to the actual test taking experience. They're using our powerful simulation of the Word software. They're going to have scenarios. And in this task list, you're kind of working in a few mini projects. You can see the mini project and the tasks for each one. Um, and these are professional situations. It wants me to create a new blank template. Once I've completed one of these tasks, I can move to the next.
and I can flag anything if I'm not sure that I've done it correctly or I can check it as done if I'm sure that I've done this correctly so that when I'm reviewing after my time is almost up I can say this is good maybe I wasn't so sure about this one and I want to go back okay um, so students uh, they'll be timed but they can go back throughout they can submit for an automatic grade and it's mimicking that simulation experience I'm going to go out of this course and back into my 2019 course now so what I just showed you you will have for all of these applications in the career readiness folder um, you will get more information about the new uh, resume assist assistant powered by LinkedIn that's in Microsoft Word 2019 um, as well as how to use our Pathbright portfolio. So if you have students creating project files that they're ultimately going to keep in a portfolio if they're creating their own resumes, one of these apps over here is the Pathbright portfolio app. It's this little yellow ball and I'm gonna jump back into my course. So the Pathbright app allows students to create digital portfolios that are highly visual, that they can share with you, the teacher, with their colleagues, their peers, um, and they could also share these with future employers because once they're 18, they can actually keep this Pathbright account and send these portfolios to employers or colleges. Um, if they get any certification through Certiport, they also can use their badging. They can put their images of their certifications or their certification badges on here as well. So this is a wonderful tool. And um, under career readiness, there will be information on how to use that. Again, your MOS resources. Right here, you'll find your trainings um, and exams that correlate to MOS. Um, and very soon, you'll see those MOS simulations at the end of those folders. There's also some get uh, quick getting started resources. So this is actually uh, to help students understand how to use this course. Um, and I don't believe that that's where it's normally is. I think I might have moved that <laughs> in an earlier training session. So I'm just going to open up um, a much newer course. Yes. And so you'll find this under welcome to your course. Um, how to get to know the different versions of Microsoft Office, and then as well, quick uh, student-facing trainings to using MindTap and to using SAM, to using your textbook projects, your exams and trainings, critical thinking challenges. Um, so you can assign these if you want at the first day of class to make sure that students are acquainted with the course and how they'll be completing assignments. Okay, so that's the learning path and how to edit things within it. Now, um, there, basically every single exam training and project that was written for your textbook is in here already. If you should ever want to add anything else, you can click this add create button. It allows you to add activities, units, or folders to your course. And you can pull in things from your computer using your Google Drive or your Microsoft OneDrive. Um, you can pull in web links, you can pull in RSS feeds, flashcards, whatever you would like into your course. But if you click SAM assignment, this actually will show a listing of all of the activities that are in your course. And you can search for them here. Um, these will already be loaded for you. But if you ever wanted to add anything else, then you can actually go to uh, the button for whatever you want to add. So let's say that I want to add a custom exam. On exams, I can click, well, first of all, I can add a custom question. So if I want to make my own multiple choice true or false question to be able to add into exams, I can do that. Um, but to add a custom exam, I have to give it a name. If you would like a companion training, so a training that will um, offer that those training features for all the tasks on your exam, you can select this, and it will create that along with it. Um, I'll click next step and here you can see you can pull things from your course um, that you already have that collection from a skills assessment or let's say that you want tasks from an entire other series uh, and the new perspectives are illustrated you can do this with projects as well 
You can click Make All SAM Tasks Available. And when I click Next Step, it'll allow me to select from tasks uh, across our entire SAM database, right? And so right now it has 000 because I haven't selected any from these yet. But let's say I want some um, Word test questions. There are 368 available. I can search for individual skills. So like um, if I'm interested in text wrapping, I can select those. I can view what that will look like, um, what that task will look like by clicking the little eyeball. And it'll give me the task instruction, but I can actually launch this to, to see it live. But let's say, yes, I want things on text wrapping and um, bolding and things with formatting, right? Um, so I can, I can select those. So now I have 17 items on my, on my list. Um, I'll click Save. And it'll ask me if I want to schedule the exam. Scheduling the exam means I'm now adding this new thing I've created into my course. So if I click Schedule, again, I have the exam name, instructions. I can set any of my settings here. Um, or maybe I just want this to be practice. And I can make those availability dates for when students can actually view the reports. I'll click Schedule. And now it'll actually take me out of that into the Assign to Course window to get it into my learning path. So again, I can set availability and due dates, and I decide where I want it to fall in my course. Once I click Add, it would fall right into my learning path where I've selected to put that. So um, this course is loaded, but if you want to be able to add your own uh, assignments through SAM, you can always do that through this green button. Um, now that we've gone through most of the course, I do want to show you how you would see your student reports. And you would do that over here on the right-hand app doc. There's two different apps you'd use a lot as a teacher. One is the progress app, which is going to have your full grade book. So um, within here, again, no really upcoming assignments or submitted assignments. But within these tabs here, if I look at grade book, um, this would give me my full grade book. Oh, and I'm not in a course with a student. Let me go back into my course that has a student. And I'll go into the progress app. It's the little green circle with a little person in it. Okay, and here you can see this dashboard is going to show me recently submitted assignments. I can extend due dates um, for the course or for students. I can adjust the score. Uh, but in the grade book tab, it will list all of your students um, here. It'll show you their overall score, the points that they have. And then to the right, it'll show their score on each activity that they've completed. So this is a giant course. Um, you scroll left to right to get to these assignments, but you can also jump to units and folders. So if I just want to get to Word Module 1, it'll take me right there. Um, and as the teacher here, if I want to edit any scores, just like when you're editing your course, you can turn this Edit toggle on, and that will allow me to manually change scores as I like. I can... Um, and I'm going to cancel that, but you know, you could you could put in here whatever you want. So if you have students who have extra credit, if you want to uh, change their score, you can do that by turning the edit scores toggle on. I'm going to turn it back off. Um, within here, you also have the ability to fully export this gradebook. So if you do want to export it into a CSV file or an Excel file to put elsewhere, you certainly can do that. And you can filter by different things. So if you just want to see everything that's due within a certain range of dates, um, if you only want to see things that are practice, or if you want to see all assignments, uh, you can do that as well. And then within the settings button, you do have the option to add categories. And this allows you to add weighting to your gradebook. So there are no categories to begin with, but you could easily do something like um, exams, trainings, Moss prep projects, and maybe I say textbook projects. And you can make whatever categories you like here. And then what you would do, everything's in uncategorized right now. It has everything in your course here. So you could actually, if I want to take projects, well, I want to take everything that's textbook projects. I can actually select all of these textbook projects 
and I can just drag them and put them into that category. So now there are nine there. I go back to uncategorized and I can see my practice assignments as well. Now I want to take all of my other projects in my course and I'm going to put them all under projects. You can do whatever you want here so that you can weight these different assignments if you like. And so how you can do that then is I can turn the category weighting on. And this allows me to decide how these will be weighted. So if my exams are 30% um, of my grade, projects are 20, and then MOS prep is 10, trainings are 20, and text with projects are 20, then I can do that and it will actually um, add that formula into my grade book for my students overall grade. Um, you can also drop the lowest score in each category. Um, so you can see lots of things that you might want to do with this. If you want to set uh, late policies, you can do that as well through the settings page. So I'm going to ignore, I'm going to just not do any of these changes. <laughs> And um, the last thing I want to show you in the gradebook is this analytics tab. And so this will actually give you an engagement report. Now I have one student, but in your course you'll see many dots where that scatter plot, all these dots are your students. You can click into that to see how that individual student is doing. But you'll see that it's tracking the engagement level of students, which is looking at the amount of time they're in the course, how many times they've logged in. You can always see their first and last login, as well as the activities that they've accessed. And so this student has accessed homework. Um, assignments and homework five seven times but once they get into the ebook that will be tracked when they watch videos that will be tracked if they access anything that you've added from your computer that will be tracked and so their engagement is really showing the percentage of activities that they've accessed that resources that they're using and you can see that in association with their grade breakdown right and so within here now because I'm selecting one student um, it's showing me an outline all the assignments that are in my course. It'll give me that student score. It'll tell me if that's something that's going to be graded or not. You can see in this assignment right here, um, it's still in progress. So the student's still working on this. Some of these things are set up as practice. And if there is anything that's set up as practice with an M, that means it's manually graded. So uh, this is a discussion question where a student would write an essay response. So at this point, it would show you a one if they attempt it you would be able to click into this as a teacher, view their attempt, and actually grade that because it's graded manually. But let's see this. This was something that was automatically graded. They got a 50%. They had one attempt. If I click into this, I can actually view that student's attempt. It will show me in this window here um, exactly what that student did in that assignment. I'm going to click Generate Report, and then here we go. Here's that individual performance report that's showing me their grade how much time they took, um, what their results were, and the, the decisions that they made in this branching scenario. I can add comments for them. I can um, delete this attempt and allow them to try it again. I can edit their score from here. Or I can even extend the due date for that individual student. So um, it's, it's not open right now because I never put a due date on this. But let's say that there was a due date on this and this student, you know, tried it or they had to leave for a softball game or they were sick. Um, to extend things for individual students, that's how you would do it. You would go into the student, into that assignment, and you can click this little calendar to extend that assignment for your individual student. So there's a lot of information you can get um, from here, from going into the student and then selecting into individual activities that they've been working on. Um, so that will allow you to see those individual reports. So for instance, this is a project that a student submitted. If I click on this and I view their attempt, again, this second window open, it will say generate report. This is opening that individual performance report for that one student on that project. It shows you the point value that they got, whether it was correct or not, what they were supposed to be doing. But an easier way to look at these reports is instead of going into that progress app, clicking into the SAM app. And this is a great place for you to, and I can expand this window by clicking this little expand button. 
a great place for you to, first of all, you can see your full instructor user guide to using all these assignments, the settings that we went through today very quickly, um, getting to support for your digital device. If you have any students who are cheating on their projects, this incident report on your dashboard here will um, have a number. It'll be red or yellow. And when you click on this, it would actually tell you which two students were involved, what exactly they copied from each other, whether it was the full document or even a portion of a document. You also get some helpful notifications here. So again, this is mentioning that new SAM release. Um, but if you click to the right, oh, important SAM links, uh, you have some really good resources here. So there are instructor help videos. Um, if you are have any questions about an individual project, like you might think that you need some kind of workaround or it's not working correctly, you can always open this file, SAM Projects and Task Information. It opens a, a spread Excel file for you. And no matter what series it is, you can see the current status of that project. Um, if there are anything that sometimes on Macs, certain projects might, may work differently. Um, sometimes Microsoft Office changes their themes or so on. If there's any helpful notes that you think you might have an issue with the project, come here first because the SAM team is updating this all the time and they'll list workarounds, they'll give you extra information from this file here. Um, but besides this dashboard, if you click results within the SAM app, you can pull reports for any kind of activity. So we were looking at some exams. Let's look at an exam. And besides pulling that individual performance report to see how one student did on it, you can pull other things like a frequency analysis. And this would actually um, show you for an individual exam. Now, I only have one student, so this isn't that interesting. But if you have 25, 30, 40, 60 students taking an exam, Generating this report would actually show you how the entire course average was for each task. So I have one student, it's all going to be either 100% or zero, but let's say um, you know you had all of these students and you found individual tasks where only 50% got that right, or only 20% got that task right, then that really shows you what you might want to go back in and, and talk about again with students, especially if it's something that's on a Microsoft Office specialist exam. That's the frequency analysis. You can get your individual performance and select students. You can also see results over your entire course with the section by results, right? So how did my entire class do? There are student completion certificates. There are student, um, student frequency analysis. So let's say that you have students, uh, you know, we have similar tasks on multiple exams. You want to see over uh, multiple attempts how they've done. You can see that. Projects are very interesting, um, and actually, let me just remind you what you might see on an individual performance report. So let's say, you know, I am interested in what this student did on this Word exam here. I'm going to generate this report. Okay, and this student got a lot of things correct. Now, on the, for the exams, because the exam is a simulation, SAM is um, actually tracking and recording students as they work. So see here where students got something incorrect. They had attempted it and they got it wrong. I have a nice little playback button. If I click this, it'll actually open a video recording of the student attempting that problem and you can see exactly what they did wrong. Okay, so this is a really powerful tool when students are saying, I don't get it, I should have got a better grade, I swear I did this correctly, um, then you can actually watch and see why a student might have gotten something marked incorrect, and you can even uh, share that with them if you'd like. Um, within projects, again, you have a frequency analysis, an individual performance, download submitted projects. If you want to see the actual file that the student submitted, select downloaded submitted projects. You can select the student, and when you come here, you'll see this will be the actual file that they submitted. And the graded file is what we showed you earlier that students also see, which is going to show the breakout of how they did on that assignment. Um, and then it would actually have track changes here working with that. So you can see either their graded file or the file they actually submitted. Um, doing individual performance for a project. If I click Generate Report, Again, you can get kind of a quick breakdown of the results that they had on that. Um, for trainings, 
If I look at an individual performance on a training, let's see how this student did on this training. Here we go. Um, it'll tell me how much time the student spent on the training, when they completed it, um, how much time they spent on both, on all of those modes. So um, if they're reading the guide, if they were watching a video, if they're practicing. And this is really nice because, you know, if they're taking a long time to finish through a training, well, maybe they haven't watched the videos, right? Uh, maybe they should be doing some of that instead of just trying to apply and getting it wrong. So you can get really helpful information from these reports um, all under the SAM app when you click results. So that was a, a tour of everything that you can do in your mind tap for Microsoft Office 2019, as well as your NGL Sync dashboard. Remember your resources, your student companion site if you need it. And again, if you have any questions, please see your sales consultant. You can always find who they are at, at um, cengage.com backslash rep finder. Um, and again, your NGL Sync login will be at nglsync.cengage.com. Thanks so much and have a great one.